Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Castlekeeper Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video is going to be a recap, uh, technically a recap of uh, both sessions 32, uh, 31 and 32, uh, but uh, I will only briefly mention 31 just uh, as far as the event that led to the, uh, the calamity of episode 32. So um, this has been a long-standing campaign with the core members of, uh, of my player uh, group. So um, these, are, these are all of the members that actually played through my AD&D first edition campaign, which lasted two years and two months. Uh, and some of them actually uh, prior to that campaign as well. Uh, this is in our first uh, attempt at a Castles and Crusades campaign. We did one that lasted about 12 weeks or so um, until I got this copy of uh, Castle Zajig and, uh, and decided uh, I got this from Troll Lord Games, obviously. Uh, everything I'm talking about is Troll Lord Games, Castles and Crusades, and now these awesome um, republishings of Gary Gygax's work um, written for Castles and Crusades uh, or in conjunction with Castles and Crusades. So, uh, so yes, we've been, uh, we've been involved with running, you know, Castles and Crusades camp campaigns now for darn close to a year. Um, so really, really happy and, and proud of that as well. Um, and so let me just jump right into the events. I am going to switch to our screen here and start walking you through. So here is the, here is the party of the group. So Bill the fighter, Cornelius the gnome druid, Cormac the priest, who is now deceased, uh, Pounce the elf ranger, Seven is our monk, and Yarg is our wizard. All right, um, so the events that led up to this. In episode 31, the party ended up getting into a combat. Uh, they're in the basement level of the Dark Chateau, uh, written by Robert Koontz. And I've changed up the adventure, you know, quite a bit, actually, to make it tied to uh, the overall campaign that we're running. And so they're in the Dark Chateau uh, looking, to, um, looking to acquire a relic that is a, a book of necromancy that was uh, owned by, the, uh, by one of the Archmages of the Circle of Eight from uh, the, the world of Greyhawk. And uh, even though they're in Igsburg here, which is really a different plane, uh, Castle Zajig, I have it as a, you know, as a, a, a bridge between different planes of existence. And, and so what they are doing is they are seeking, um, they are seeking these eight books uh, that um, will somehow in some way um, either grant them access into the castle Zajig or uh, it will have some kind of an effect uh, on the castle Zajig that will allow it to return to its ability to be that conduit between different planes of existence. They're not quite sure yet. They haven't learned all the pieces yet. They're still kind of piecing this together. And so um, they're, they're going for the second book. They already have the book of, uh, of transmutation, all right, which allows Yarg, the, uh, the wizard, uh, to cast spells directly out of the book. Uh, that are in there. He can't learn them from the book, but he can cast them directly from the book. But there's a downside to that. If he should fail <coughs> with the higher level spells, then he, um, he will summon 
a uh, an elemental uh, creature, usually um, an earth elemental, that will then turn on anything that it sees in sight, with the exception of Yarg the wizard. All right, uh, and he can't stop it from attacking or, or whatnot. He can only he's only protected from it. Um, now he could of course participate in destroying it if that should happen, but um, the level of spells that he's casting at this point uh, are going to summer, summon some you know pretty powerful uh, elementals depending on the level of spells that he's casting. So in session 31, they were in this basement level and they knew that they were potentially going to encounter a vampiric Medusa. All right, um, and and they ultimately know that there is a very powerful pa vampire that is uh, associated with the dark chateau. The whole chateau has been taken over by um, the undead. Thus, the the book of necromancy is believed to be stored here. So, they got into the combat with uh, with this Medusa or vampiric Medusa. And um, during the combat, Cormac was turned to stone. They defeated the Medusa, cutting off her head and doing the, the whole nine yards uh, after having defeated her. And now it became a week-long discussion on how they were going to restore Cormac back to his you know, back to his regular self. Now, Yarg is going to use the, um, Yarg is going to use a, uh, use the book that has, um, it's actually not the transmutation, I'm sorry, it's a book of portals. Um, so he's going to use the book of portals and he's going to cast a, uh, a teleport spell from it. He's going to teleport back to the city of Vigsburg, go to the, the magic, uh, you know, the Tower of Magic there. And he's going to get two scrolls uh, of, um, of stone to flesh. So there's a risk of him teleporting out um, because it's a higher level spell than he can cast normally. And, uh, and then once again, teleporting back using it. Uh, that was the fastest route that he could possibly take in getting the uh, scrolls ready to be used. <coughs> the other plan that they had was uh, he was going to send his familiar, which is an owl, to fly all the way back to Igsburg. Now there, you know, there at least for, for an owl, it might take a week to get there and a week to get back. Um, you know, possibly a little bit less so. But um, they're not exactly in a place where they can stay that long. So, uh, so they decided to go the teleport route. And he teleported there, bought the two scrolls, you know, at a, a pretty exorbitant price, and then teleported back without an issue. So now he has to cast the, um, the scrolls, um, which doesn't have the, you know, he doesn't have the uh, issue with the level differences and such. And... Um, both times he actually failed. It was just, you know, it was just one of those bizarre things, you know, um, and, and both, both roles failed. And so that was a, uh, you know, that was a, uh, a setback. Now we're into, we're getting a little bit deeper into, um, episode 32 and they, they start, searching through the rest of the uh, the rest of the uh, space. I, I will take you to that map so you can see. Uh, let's see Chateau basement. So here they are in the Chateau basement. So around here is where Cormac was uh, around here. Let me make sure you're looking at it. Yes. Around here is where Cormac was actually uh, turned to stone and they traveled through and they went down here into B-17A and they encountered a, a green slime and 
<coughs> they really did do an awesome job in um, in taking care of this green slime. Uh, they they had a flute of shrinking, and so they shrunk the green green slime down into a very small you know little um, little slime, and then they just torched it with a uh, with a single torch. They just burnt it to a crisp with a single torch. Uh, really really smart and effective way of uh, not only remembering the magic items that they had, but using them in a very effective way. So now they, they were starting to wonder, they're like, like we searched through most of this place. Actually, they're going to see they missed a little room now, um, uh, which I will leave empty uh, at this point. But they, they searched through and they finally discovered this secret door. And this led into the next battle that they were going to have. And I will shift you over to this battle. So they were fighting kind of like a modified Bahir, all right? Um, so I made it more, you know, I made it more aligned with something that their diminished party can, can um, still have a challenge, but, uh, but, you know, potentially save themselves from it as well. And they went through this big combat with it, and uh, and they did in fact defeat it. Then they start searching through its its treasures, and during the course of searching through its treasures, it had one magic item, which happened to be a mirror, which was just a a random roll that they had some form of a magic mirror. And I thought, would it make sense for the Medusa to have stashed away? A mirror protected by this Bahir, uh, and it's a mirror that can reverse the um, reverse the stone to flesh. And so that's what I did. I was like, all right, this is a very powerful mirror, and let's give it that effect. And so that now they're really excited, and they're like, all right, let's let's carry the mirror out to Cormac and just put Cormac in, you know, viewing into the mirror and everything and turn him from stone to flesh. And so they go and they set the mirror in front of him and they wait a few moments and Cormac's body starts shifting from, from stone to flesh and he fails his constitution check and he's dead. All right, and um, I'm sitting there when he rolled that roll and he failed the constitution check. I'm, I'm kind of sitting there stunned. And I'm like, wow. Um, he's, uh, yeah, he's, his character is dead. And uh, everyone's like, wow, it's, uh, you know, that's an amazing, you know, an amazing loss uh, to the party. Uh, this is someone who they've been uh, traveling with and adventuring with for 32 weeks and so um, Cormac in the, in the moment um, the player that plays him decided well I'll take over using Yarg because uh, the player that normally runs Yarg has not been you know has not been available due to you know work and travel and everything for the last couple of weeks and so I had been managing Yarg and so he was going to just take over Yarg and utilize that character until the other player returns. <coughs> However, the party does have a shortage now. It doesn't have a, a cleric or priest. Uh, it also doesn't have a, uh, a, a rogue or a thief character. Uh, so now the party has this, this really diminished function uh, to do certain, you know, certain very specialized tasks. And so um, the player is going to create a new character. He wants to use the class and a half. Uh, and actually, I could switch views here. He wants to use the he wants to use the class and a half feature of uh, Castles on Crusades, where you are a primary class and then you get half of the features of the other class. And you know, I'm not a huge fan of that system because I, I don't like having to do formulas for calculating experience points, but um, I think we're going to homebrew it, and um, and so he wants to have a dwarven cleric, uh, a dwarven cleric rogue or thief, 
and um, what I'm going to do is uh, we will sit down before tonight's session uh, for some time and hammer out exactly what that's going to look like and and come up with a um, a calculation chart for when the character goes up in levels uh, basically it's it's increasing by 50% the experience points needed to go from one level to the next so it's a it's a pretty um, it's a pretty extensive cost for doing that but um, they're in a place where people have been captured and and you know turn to you know turn to um, turned into the undead and everything like that so uh, it'll be very very easy to insert a new character into um, into session 33 um, so uh, that's an easy one to explain and uh, and and so that's how that transition will most likely take place at some point during tonight's session I haven't quite figured out how it's going to happen when it's going to happen but I'm going to let it organically happen as I you know just react to what the players are doing uh, during tonight's session so um, so yeah the campaign is doing well we had a couple of hiccups during the summertime with vacations and you know my being out sick for a week with uh, with COVID so um, looking forward to getting jumping right back into it and um, you know last week's session was was awesome in the fact that it was just a um a monumental event you know for the for the party and for the group in, in general and uh and now i'm really anticipating you know a, a pretty impressive event tonight uh with the introduction of a new character and uh and see how that goes and, and integrates into the overall um the overall setting and um you know of the adventure that they're currently in and and see how that impacts the campaign moving forward because my players when they when they adopt new characters you know and for many of them this is like their third or fourth character that uh i've been introduced to over these last you know close to four years now and um even though it's the same player, when they adopt a new character, that character really is different from their original, you know, or from their previous characters. They really do take on a, uh, you know, a life and a spirit of their own, and they 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 just function different, and they they interact and role play differently than previously, and 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 that's the, you know, something I'm I'm excited to see with the introduction of a new character, how um this new character fits in so i hope you enjoyed this video uh I, I know that a lot of people ask for more of these recaps and everything and eventually i will do some uh some actual play uh perhaps not with this group because this group is a fairly large group um but uh, i was planning on doing it with my shadow dark group this past uh this past uh saturday however with labor day weekend that kind of uh, that kind of got interfered with with you know family coming to my home, so it had nothing to do with my players. Um, although one of those players is actually recovering from uh, some medical issues, and so hopefully he will return to us next Saturday uh, or Sunday. I haven't decided because again I have family coming over on the weekend, uh, so we might have to push that off until Sunday, and then. Um, and then starting work today so um you know my new schedule and everything like that i might have to reconfigure that uh shadow dark campaign when it's going to actually run and find a uh potentially either a different day or just temporarily we'll do sunday and then we'll go back to our regular saturday schedule so again thanks for joining uh in about an hour and a half's time i'll be doing a live stream with uh with venture satanus the creator of chalt and other uh eldridge gonzo sci-fi horror weirdness and um and then 
later on this evening, I will return to Sumerian September and do, um, you know, do an installment of uh, Sumerian September. Uh, I'll also be doing a, uh, an off script roadway because I am going back to work today. And I always do those as soon as I get into the parking lot of my job. And uh, so it'll be a pretty, pretty extensive day considering I'm also working today. So uh, quite a lot going on. So uh, remember to subscribe and hit the alert button so that you will see when all of these things are coming up. And as they drop, you'll have the opportunity to see them and watch, watch them, respond to them and, uh, and whatnot. So you all have a great rest of your day and take care.